Welcome to the Adult Chair Podcast with Michelle Chalfont, a place to delve into who we are, how we got that way, and explore what it takes to be a healthy grown up. With an extensive toolbox and guests with varied expertise, Michelle will lead us on a journey to learn what it's like to live authentically and to love ourselves just the way we are. And now, here's Michelle. Hello, hello. Happy New Year. Happy 2020, everybody. Can you believe it's January 2nd? I I personally cannot. Hope everyone had a great holiday and great New Year's. I was at my sister's in Charlotte, North Carolina for a week with all my family. You know, all the Rochester, New York people, we all moved down to Charlotte like 20 years ago. So that's where we go. We had to get out of the cold. As much as I love the cold, or I loved Rochester, excuse me, don't love the cold. I had to get away from the cold. That's why I moved down to Charlotte 20 years ago. Yeah, so I had a great holiday. I hope you guys did too, and a great New Year's. You know, I'm not a big party it up on New Year's Eve kind of person, but we did a, I did attend a group meditation on New Year's Eve that was pretty darn cool. So that's what we did to bring in the new year. But here we are. 2020 is upon us. Crazy, 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 crazy. I want to welcome all of our new listeners. I know we have a lot of you out there. If you want more information about the adult chair, you guys know, just go to theadultchair.com. You get all the information there, all kinds of good stuff there on the website. So today we're talking about you know me, I love transformation. I had to, I had to think through like what what exactly do I want to talk about in the new year to really kick off the new year. I thought long and hard about it. I was going to talk about intention cuz you know new year's res- resolutions are fantastic and we get so excited about them, but by mid February I think they're mostly gone. So I thought, you know, what else can we talk about cuz I'm all about transformation and what I what I really have learned in my own personal experience and in working with people for almost, gosh, 25 years or more now, is that we all want to transform and we want to do it quickly. And I wish I had that magic pill because if I did, I'd be a billionaire. (laughs) I really would on how we can transform with one pill and we cannot. But I also do not believe that it takes years and years and years and years and years and years and years of therapy in order to transform. I believe when we have the right tools, that we can transform quite quickly. That's what the adult chair is all about. That's why it was created because I know when we can get in our adult, everything starts to change. So that's what we're talking about today. Again, small steps lead to big transformation. And I'm talking with you today about the four agreements, the book by Don Miguel Ruiz. And we've got, he's got the four agreements that so line up beautifully with the adult chair. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm going to give you very specific examples on how you too can change and transform your own life just by applying these four agreements. So cool. Even if you've read this book, I read it so many times. It came out in 1997. It fell into my lap again in December and I was like, whoa, I got to resurrect these things. If you've read it before, you got to listen today. And if you've not read it, you're going to have to go and get this book. It's so good. But either way, we're talking about these four agreements and how you can apply them in your life starting today, like right this moment. (laughs) So there's that. I just want to share with you again, we will be in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll be back in exactly four weeks from today on January 30th for the live adult chair event. I'll be there for three days, January 30th, 31st, and February 1st. So if you want to come join me there, I'd love to see you. Just go to theadultchair.com forward slash events, and you can get all the information there. All the deets are there. Speaking of live, this is a really giant announcement. I'm, I get excited about a lot of things. This really excites me. I'm doing another live event today, January 2nd at noon. And it is, again, we have made big changes, not big changes, but this is a big change for me, actually, in the membership. No more podcasts in that membership anymore. We are doing, or I am doing, I should say, live coaching or teaching every single month for one hour. That starts today at noon central time. So if you are listening to this in the morning of January 2nd, you still have time to come join me. 
So every month now we keep growing this uh, membership or as far as what I offer. It's a lot in one month. I'm doing a live coaching session every single month for an hour. You can join me live on video. You can ask questions and I'm going to answer. We've also got, you know, the membership is all about a monthly theme. So this month's theme, you guys, so cool. I'm so excited. Who do you want to be? We are crafting that person that you want to become. We're doing it this whole entire month in the membership. This is the month to join. If you Even if you just want to come in for one month, come on in because it's going to set the tone for the entire year. So this month, who do you want to be? We've got the live coaching session today. We've got the member, or excuse me, the meditation that completely coincides with the monthly theme. It's an awesome meditation, I have to say. I pick two members every single month and I work with them and record it. And then you get to listen and learn from their experiences, their life experiences, and how we take the adult chair and apply it into our own lives. We've got every month a live Q&A for an hour, which of course typically goes to 90 minutes because there's so many great questions and I can't stop. The big thing that I love again is every single week on Sunday, you will get an email with your self-discovery work, which is like, it takes about 15 minutes, but it's really important work where you take everything you've learned and you apply it in your own life. These are journaling prompts. These are weekly challenges. These are weekly focuses. This is where you're really incorporating the work that you're learning during the week and putting, putting it in your own life. Lastly, we've got a fabulous Facebook group with the Tech Tribe members. So a great group of people that are supportive and loving and encouraging and vulnerable and all that. So I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So come join us, theadultchair.com forward slash membership. This is the month. Again, come in just for this month of any month. Who do you want to be? We are crafting it. We are creating it and we're bringing it into the now. There you go. Okay, let's get to it now. Don Miguel Ruiz put this book, The Four Agreements, A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom, out in 1997. I'm trying to think when I got that book. It was pretty close to 1997, I think, because I remember my son was very small and he was born in 1997 when I first read this. And I have to say, how I apply The Four Agreements has changed over the years. And now having the adult chair and striving to live in my healthiest adult every single day. These four agreements mean even more to me. So I'm going to jump right in and go over these four agreements. Number one, be impeccable with your word. This was something (laughs) I did not do very well for many, many years. I was the type of person that would say yes. You know, my codependency would bleed through and everything. I'd say yes. People say, hey, do you want to go? to this party or that dinner or shopping with me? Yes, of course I want to go. I wouldn't even, there would be no hesitation. I would jump and say yes. And then I'd think about it after and then realize that's not something I want to do. And then I'd have to find my way out of it and I'd have to backpedal and I'd have to make up an excuse and I'd have to make up all these reasons why I couldn't go. And then people would get mad at me and all this crap. So it's like, ugh, I have learned over time to be really, really mindful. You guys, this is adult chair. To be mindful with my word. I have the word striven. (laughs) I don't think that's a word. I strive (laughs) to be impeccable, which, which means if you're someone like me that used to jump and say yes, and then go, crap, that's an, I don't want to go to that damn party. What we need to do is we slow down and we pause and we think before we speak. When we are impeccable, we take responsibility for our actions, okay? Don Miguel Ruiz actually says, when you are impeccable, you take responsibility for your actions, but you do not judge or blame yourself. So what I used to do is not only say yes when I meant no, then I'd have to backpedal, get my way out of it. The person would be mad at me because now I got to back my way out of it. And then I judge myself and blame myself and think I was a bad person. That all goes away when we, when we make the decision to become impeccable with our word. So you have to learn how to commit to what you're saying you're going to do and drop gossiping. Okay. Just stop it. Stop the blame of self and others or criticism of self or others. I used to beat up on myself. I have let that go. Okay. It doesn't feel good when we sit and start talking about other people. Tune into your body. It feels like crap. 
Notice your body. When we gossip or talk about others, I've noticed this. My whole body now starts to contract. It doesn't feel good. Start paying attention to what happens to your heart when you're talking about other people. I promise you, when you tune into your heart, you'll stop it because it just doesn't feel good physically speaking. So slow down, stand behind your word. Another thing that Don Miguel says is you can measure the impeccability of your word by your level of self-love. So beautiful. I love it. So be impeccable with your word is number one agreement. Okay, agreement number two, don't take anything personally. Good Lord, this is such an important one. When another treats us poorly, it's it reflects their pain and suffering and their wounding. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> when another treats us poorly, it reflects their pain and suffering, their wounding. So we have to learn how to not take it personally. Byron Katie said this. I love this. Our job is unconditional love. The job of everyone else in your life is to push our buttons. (laughs) What do you think of that one? I love that because when we are triggered, we have a choice. We can either react or we can shh and shut that person down or, or capital bold or disengage from the drama and stay connected to ourselves and witness the other person's pain and wounding. Think about it, you guys. When someone's reacting toward us with anger, with pain, with whatever, they're in pain. They are in pain. They are suffering on some level. So they're reacting with anger toward us. Is this easy to witness this? Heck no. But is it possible with practice? Heck yes. It takes practice. This agreement don't take anything personally. Mm. It's a, it's, it's, I think one of the biggest ones, it really does create the utmost freedom when we stop taking everything personally. I remember driving, um, this has happened many times, but I have a memory right now that's coming to me of driving my car and I was turning, you know, like when you're turning left or right and you've got like two lanes of traffic. Well, I was turning left and this woman next to me in a minivan was coming to my, she was to my, excuse me, I was to the left, she was to the right. And we were all turning left together. And she like cut me off. She went in my lane and I leaned on the horn. I was so pissed at this woman. I was like, what the hell is she doing? She almost had, we almost had a car accident because of her. And I'm like getting ready. I zoom up to glare at her. You know, (laughs) I was in my adolescent chair. I'm not going to lie, you guys. This was many years ago, of course. (laughs) I would never do that now. But anyway, I was turning left she cuts me. I zoom up to like give her a glare from my adolescent chair, a real mean glare. And I got up next to her and it's a friend of mine. It's my friend, Michelle. And I go, Oh, Hey, and I put my window down. And I'm like, Hey, what are you doing? You got me up. She's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. And we laughed and we went on. But originally, man, I was ticked off at her. I took it personally. I was so angry and upset with her. Boom everything changed in a heartbeat. That's a simple example, but man, think about it. Think about it. I disconnected from myself because she cut me off. Now, what we tend to do is we blame others for our disconnection, but really, and again, don't blame yourself. This is not about blaming self. We've got to learn how to take responsibility and cling to our connection of self no matter what. Don't take things personally. When we do that and stop taking things personally, we are able to stay connected to ourselves more than ever. And that's what we want. We want to stay connected to ourselves no matter what. Okay. Okay, here we go with number three, agreement three. You're going to recognize this. If you know anything about the adult chair, you know this. Don't make assumptions. (laughs) You know what I say, no stories and assumptions. This uh, agreement three is don't make assumptions. Hello, adult chair. As we know, 
stories, and assumption create misery. And most of our stories and assumptions are false. They don't happen. They don't come true. Like 97% of them don't come, do not come true. You know, I have friends and clients that will swear up and down that they know how things are going to turn out and they know why so-and-so did this to them. And you guys, we don't know. We want to know. The ego wants to cling to that. The ego says, I know exactly what's going on. So what happens is we make up a story or assumption about why someone does this or why someone does not do that. And then we have emotions around our stories and assumptions and down the rabbit hole we go. Don't let your brain send you down that rabbit hole. Live with only fact and truth. And you've got to be okay with the unknown. You know, if we don't know why so-and-so did this, we can reach out to them and ask. And if that person doesn't let us know, we've got to be okay with the unknown. That's hard. Because the ego wants to make sure that, you know, I didn't make a mistake and I'm not wrong and you still like me and all this stuff. We've got to learn how to be okay with the unknown assumptions are not reality. They're guesses. We believe our assumptions are truth, and it's not. We take things personally (laughs) based on assumptions. I remember a friend of mine a few years ago, she called me and she said, it was like in December, actually, now they think about it. She said, we need to talk. I said, oh God, okay. Are you okay? She goes, I'm, I'm not. And I said, "Uh Oh, I can't imagine what's going on. And we met up for breakfast and she sat me down and I said, what's happening? I thought something was wrong with one of her kids. That was my assumption again, because I'm like, wow, something's going on, but I'm going to be there for my friend, you know? And she sat me down and she goes, and she met me for breakfast. She looked so serious. And she said to me, I need to know what's wrong with you. And I said, what do you mean? What's wrong with me? She goes, you missed my birthday. And that's not like you. You've never missed my birthday. So I clearly, this is my friend talking. She said, you're clearly mad at me. I've done something wrong or there's something really wrong with you. I don't know, but I am, have had such a bad few weeks because you missed my birthday and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, what, what? I missed, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, I did miss your birthday. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is what our whole breakfast is about? She goes, and she was dead serious. Like she thought either she did something wrong and that I was really mad at her or something was wrong with me. She went on and on. I was like, what? And she had done this for weeks, which made me feel terrible because I had missed her birthday because I had had, I remember that week actually, I had all these deadlines and I had all these podcasts to put out and I had just worked. I was buried under work and I don't think I came out of my office for that whole week. And it just was a mistake. Like there was no excuse for it. There was, and I felt terrible and her birthday was in my calendar and I just completely missed it. It was just a human error. That's all it was. But she'd spent weeks so upset and I had no idea. So of course in that breakfast, I bought her breakfast and we cleared the air and I was like, oh my gosh, I love you. You're so right. And this is my bad. This will never happen again. And, you know, it's just a mistake, but she had suffered for many weeks because of it. And it just was not true. So you have to be really, really, really watch yourself with stories and assumptions. I'm adding that his Don Miguel's agreement. Number three is just don't make assumptions, but because of what we're doing, the adult chair Don't make stories and assumptions because not good. Okay, number four, agreement. Always in last agreement. See how simple these are? They're very simple for agreements, but they take an application process. But anyway, number four, always do your best. Always do your best. Now, here's the thing. I did not say to be perfect, but I am suggesting do your best. What that means to me, again, these are all adult chair podcasts I've done, you guys. When we're doing our best, we own our reality. I did a podcast on that. We take responsibility. Did a podcast on that. We apologize. If you've hurt someone, you've made a mistake and intentionally, you give a sincere apology. Remember, these backward, excuse me, back ass apologies like, 
I'm sorry you feel that way. That's not an apology, folks. That's not an apology. An apology is, I'm so sorry that I hurt you. Like with my friend, I missed her birthday. I'm so sorry. And I looked at her dead in the face and I said, this was my mistake. This was, I'm so sorry. I let my work get in the way of your birthday. Never again. It was a big wake up call for me. I didn't say I'm so sorry that you feel that way, that I've hurt you, but it wasn't my fault because I had deadlines. That's a back ass apology, a backward apology. No, you take responsibility if you have hurt someone or made a mistake. You guys, we're human. We make mistakes. Who cares? Do your best. Say, I love you. Let me tell you something. Some days, this is big. Some days our best means I'm exhausted and I cannot get off the couch today. And that's my best. And I'm going to have to cancel coming to your party. And I'm going to have to cancel lunch because the best I've got today is like 10% of my energy and I'm so tired. But doing my best might mean I've got to lay down today and take a nap or have a movie day at home. And I'm going to have to cancel plans, but that's my best and that's okay. So don't beat up on yourself if your best might be a day on the couch. That's okay. And by the way, our best changes daily or hourly. Just strive to do your best though. Reach for the best that you've got. So number four, always do your best. So as you can tell these agreements, easy, like I said. How do we make these agreements happen with our, within ourselves? Don Miguel Ruiz agrees. This is something I have said for years. It's all about awareness. You have to raise your awareness around these four agreements. If we're not aware, we cannot change. And we certainly, certainly (laughs) cannot live by the four agreements. So raise your awareness around these very simple four agreements. You guys go to Google, type in the four agreements, and you can print off the four agreements. I remember I did this many years ago when I went to the beach with my sister and her family and I printed off, I brought the four agreements with me to the beach. I printed them off and I put them on the refrigerator and I said, let's see how often we are not living by the four agreements. It was such a fun week at the beach, but wow, it was fascinating to see how often we fell into story and assumption, right? We weren't living our best. So have fun with this, but do apply it. Raise your awareness around these four agreements. Truly raise your awareness. Print them off. Put them on your nightstand. Put them on your fridge. Bring them to work with you. Put them in your car. Have a daily reminder of these very simple four agreements because they really, really do create change, transformation, most importantly, personal freedom. Aren't we all about personal freedom and peace? That's what we're looking for, you guys personal freedom. That's it. These four agreements will do just that. So there you go. Hope you find this helpful. Go get this book. And by the way, don't forget, if you want to listen to this book on Audible, you can get this book for free. If you're not already a member of Audible, just go to audibletrial.com forward slash the adult chair and you get a free 30 day trial and get any book, but you can get this book. The Four Agreements, Don Miguel Ruiz. I'll put this all in the show notes. Do apply these four agreements. Life-changing. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget, theadultchair.com. You will get information on the membership there. You can get information on the events and anything else you want. Lots of guided meditations or whatever you need. It's all in theadultchair.com. All right, you guys, happy, happy new year. I love you all. And I will see you seated right here next week in The Adult Chair. Thank you.